First of all, a couple of things. Number one, Luke is the truth. Luka Doncic is not afraid. He's not afraid to try, not afraid to shoot, not afraid of success, and not afraid of failure. He's averaging 29, 9, and 9 again. Doncic. Doncic pulls up, three-pointer. It's not often that we see a player as talented as Luka Doncic step onto the court. At just 22 years old, he's asserted himself as one of the best players in the league today. His phenomenal playmaking skills, combined with his iconic step-back threes, make for an effortless offensive game. Luka's done things that we've never seen before, and he's just barely scratching the surface of what he can become. You may know him now for his terrific handles and no-look passes, but have you ever stopped and questioned how he even got here? Luka's story is a lot more complex than you'd think. It's not often that a 13-year-old travels 1,300 miles by themselves to pursue their basketball dream. It's not often that a player who was barely getting minutes on Real Madrid evolved into an NBA superstar just three years later. It's not often that you already have people claiming you'll be a Hall of Famer at the age of 22. Most NBA fans marvel at his successes, but have no idea the journey he took to get to this point. This is Luka Doncic and his unbelievable story. Luka was born in Ljubljana, Slovenia in 1999. He immediately showed love for the sport he plays today, his parents saying he first touched a basketball when he was only 7 months old, and played on a mini hoop around the age of 1. Basketball wasn't the only sport that interested him. Luka also played football, which he quit after growing too tall. Doncic played organized basketball for the first time at 7 years old, and most of the other players were as old as 10. Luka was already playing up to the competition something that would become normal as time goes on. When Doncic was 8 years old, his father started playing for his hometown club, the Union Olympia. Head coach Greg Abrezovec of that team invited Luka to practice with players of his age. Little did that coach know, he just invited a kid who would turn out to be the most accomplished EuroLeague player of all time, a future NBA superstar, a soon-to-be EuroLeague MVP, and it all started from one invitation. Immediately, you could tell he was different. Only 16 minutes into his first training session, he was moved to the 11-year-old group. Then in the next session, he was moved to the under-14 Spanish club competition. Are you catching a pattern here? This kid was an absolute prodigy. From the get-go, he was ready to show the world his incredible skills. According to rules set by the league, Luca couldn't play for the under-14 group. He simply practiced with them, but he was allowed to play with the under-12 team, coming off the bench against opponents who were three to four years older than him. Luka Doncic won his first of many MVPs at the Under-14 San Paolo Cup in Budapest in September 2011. In February 2012, he competed in an Under-14 Spanish club competition, where he won a tournament MVP, leading Real Madrid to a second-place finish. Luka put up 13, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists, and 3.3 steals per game, which were solid. He made those numbers look like nothing averaging 35 points per game in the Lido di Roma tournament for Olympia, winning the title with a 54-point triple-double, and earning the MVP award. Luca had done it. He's went from an unknown 8-year-old kid who was invited to a practice to a multiple-time MVP winner in the EuroLeague, and he was just getting started. At just 13 years of age, Doncic signed a 5-year contract with Real Madrid. He immediately began playing with and against competition three years older than him, playing for the under-16 team. By doing this, Luca had to leave behind his family and friends, and travel 1,300 miles to Madrid, Spain. Imagine leaving the only place you've ever known, at such a young age, simply to pursue your basketball dream. The pressure began to build as well, someone with as many achievements as Luca at such a young age surely added some adversity. He played in yet another tournament, scoring 25 points in the finals to win it all, easily earning MVP honors. Just one month later, he earned the MVP again in the Under-16 Spain Championship with 25 points. 
All of these performances earned him the nickname Wonder Boy. At just 14 years old, Luca's already achieved so much. What else lies ahead for the future legend? Okay, okay, stats are great and all, but what else significant happens? Fast forward two years. Now came the challenging part. It was time for Luca to play professionally for the actual Real Madrid team. He was just 16 years old, the youngest player to ever play for the team. Would this be when Luca finally meets his match? Would a kid who's destroyed the competition for years finally fold under the pressure and be exposed on the biggest stage? He made his official debut on April 30th, 2015, only playing two minutes minutes but hitting a three-pointer. The crowd erupted. The whole country knew about his potential. He didn't even hesitate on the three. It's as if he was born ready. He only played five games in the 2014-15 ACB season, averaging two points and one rebound per game. It's hard to believe that a future NBA MVP candidate wasn't even getting minutes just a few years ago. Luca got a small taste of what it was like playing against the pros. Now would be the rise to prominence. One of the most iconic early moments featuring Wonder Boy was when he faced off against the Oklahoma City Thunder in the 2016 preseason. He guarded a player who would end up winning an MVP, Russell Westbrook, producing this well-known photo. A young Luca who would take the world by storm in just a few years, and a player who was about to take the world by storm in just a few weeks. Throughout the season, he showed flashes of his coveted playmaking and scoring ability. Through 42 ACB games in the 2016-17 season, Doncic averaged 7 points, four rebounds, and three assists per game. He was named the EuroLeague Rising Star by a unanimous vote, and also claimed the ACB Best Young Player Award. Slowly over the months, you could see Luca's evolution. From a kid sitting on the bench 90% of the game, to entering a significant role on his team, his development was incredible to witness. 2017-2018 the MVP season. Some of the most iconic performances in EuroLeague history came from none other than the man himself. After all of those years where his stats steadily improved, Luca was now thrown into the spotlight as the undoubted number one option. In only the second game of the season, he dropped a career-high 27 points. You could tell it would be his year. Let me throw you these numbers. 27 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists. 28 points, 33 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists in one night. 20 points, 10 assists, and 8 rebounds. Luca was making the competition look like nothing, finding a way to dominate almost every single game. He put up near triple doubles and stacked up awards like they were candy. He won the Player of the Month award and became the youngest to do so. On March 30th, 2018, Doncic scored 24 points and made a game-winning three with under a second left to win the game. Not only could he score, but he had a clutch gene unlike any other. Luka led his team through the playoffs all the way into the finals, scoring 15 points to win the championship. Luka had done it. He's won the EuroLeague MVP award, also winning the EuroLeague Final Four MVP. Just a few years ago, he was known as the son of a EuroLeague player, but over time he grew his skills, worked hard for his minutes, destroyed the competition, and on the biggest stage in the country, Luca had won it all. Did I mention that this was taking place during the draft? At this time, people looked at Luka Doncic and all of his achievements, and still questioned if he was good enough to go number one. Three NBA teams doubted this, the Phoenix Suns, Sacramento Kings, and Atlanta Hawks. They all believed there was someone better to pick. The Suns and Kings both drafted one and two and skipped on Luka. The the Hawks held the third pick and traded down with the Dallas Mavericks, and the Mavs finally took Doncic with the third pick. A guy who was selected to the EuroLeague All-Decade team, a kid who developed his skills by playing against grown men, all of that, 
and three teams still decided to skip on him. Doncic was out for blood, and the Mavericks knew that they couldn't let this opportunity go to waste. Luka's rookie season was nothing short of magical. He immediately showed his limitless potential just a few games into the season, dropping 26 points and 6 rebounds in a win against the Timberwolves. He became the youngest player to ever score 20 points or more in a game. Okay, okay, that's cool and all, but he can't do that again. Just a few weeks later, Doncic scored 34 points and became the youngest player in NBA history to make 7 three-pointers in a game. Alright, alright, but no way he'll take over games. He's not clutch. Luka had one of the greatest fourth quarter performances of the season against the Houston Rockets, saucing up their defense and hitting some of the best looking clutch shots you'll ever see, and being named Rookie of the Month again. <laughs> It was apparent that Luka was born ready. I mean, how could a guy named Wonderboy not be a superstar? Doncic took a franchise that was dead in the water with absolutely no future and revived the team with remarkable, never before seen performances that were a joy to watch. One of his notable achievements was getting the at the time second youngest triple double ever versus the Bucks. This kid was a beast. Some even discussed whether or not he was the greatest rookie of all time. He had the fourth most triple doubles in the league at just age 19. He became just the fifth player in NBA history to average at least 20 points, five rebounds, and five assists per game in his rookie year, joining players like Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, LeBron James, and Tyreek Evans. Of course he was rookie of the year and was a first team all rookie unanimously. Luka exploded onto the scene and changed the way we see EuroLeague basketball. No longer would it be as disrespected as it previously was. It was a tough league with competition that needed to be taken seriously. Luka's second season in the NBA was somehow even better. However, the expectations continued to rise for the young player and his team. The hope was for a playoff appearance, but for a team that hadn't done such a thing in three seasons, for many, it seemed out of the realm. For Luka, it was just another challenge he would succeed at. Literally two games into the season, the triple-double machine began rolling as Doncic posted a 25-point, 10 assists, 10 rebound game to secure the W against the Pelicans. He also became the youngest player to ever have a 35-point triple-double in back-to-back -back games. His Mavericks team had a 33-22 and record at the All-Star break. Compared to last season when they were 26-31, and the improvement was hard to ignore. Luka earned his first All-Star appearance as a starter, the youngest European player to ever start in an All-Star game. To have such an esteemed award to your name in just your second year? you know you're doing something right. Doncic let his presence be known in the bubble. The time off left him unfazed, as he immediately returned with a 34-point, 20-rebound, triple-double. He followed this with a 19-assist night. He quite literally could do everything and anything on the offensive end. It was marvelous. His rookie year was excellent, and this season was that much better, finishing top three in the most improved player race. Now came the challenging part, the playoffs. Luka had had quite the experience in the EuroLeague, leading his team to the championship, but could those playoff performances translate into the NBA? The seven-seeded Dallas Mavericks squared off against the heavily favored LA Clippers, and it was a battle unlike any other. Game one of the playoffs was Luka's postseason debut, where he scored 42 points in a close loss, the most ever by a player in their first playoff game. He followed that up with a 28-point outing in a victory to tie the series at one game apiece. Then in game four, as the Clippers led the series 2-1, he dropped a 43-point triple-double, topping it off with one of the most iconic game-winning shots we've ever seen, a step-back bucket at the buzzer to tie it at two games apiece. Luka had the world on notice and put Dallas on the map 
an unbelievable shot that exploded on social media. This was the last game Dallas was able to win, however. They dropped the series in six, even with an elimination game by Luka that included a light 38 points. It just wasn't enough. The Mavericks had injury issues with Chris Porzingis, and the Clippers just had more star power. Dallas surprised many with how hard they fought, earning the respect of NBA fans. This spectacular season landed him on the first team All-NBA, and he was fourth in the MVP rankings. Reminder, this guy was just 21. He already had what could be a Hall of Fame career in his second season. Fans had never seen anything like it. Luka finished his second season averaging 29 points. 9 assists, and 8 rebounds per game, a near triple-double average. That brings us to the current season, where Luka has continued to take strides in his game. This season, he broke more records, reaching 5,000 career points and being the fourth youngest to ever do so. Against the Wizards, he scored a 30-point triple-double with 20 assists, a true stat sheet stuffer. His Dallas Mavericks continued to make improvements as a unit, finishing with the 5th seed a two-seed improvement compared to the last time around. The Mavericks started out slow, with an ugly record of 9-14 and 14 through the first 23 games, but Doncic and his leadership, combined with the team clicking, helped them rally in the second half of the season. We've already gone over the endless amounts of stats and records this guy has broken in the regular season, so I want to focus a bit more on the playoffs, because that's where Luka really flips the switch. The Mavericks entered the 2021 playoffs with mixed expectations. Some thought they had a chance to go far, others believed they needed more time to develop. They once again squared off against the LA Clippers. As we remember, last season they challenged Kawhi and his squad, forcing the series to 6. Could this be the year Luka breaks through and advances to the second round? They certainly got off to a striking start opening up the series with a 2-0 lead. Doncic played out of his mind levels of good, 42 points in Game 1, 28 in Game 2. He wanted revenge, and the Clippers had absolutely no answer. At this point, many believed in the Mavericks' chances of advancing. The Clippers were no easy foe, so this could be one of Luka's greatest achievements. LA rallied back to win Games 3 and 4, despite a 44-point performance by Wonderboy. The Mavs won Game 5 by a close 5 points, Luka dropping 42. His squad was just one game game away from finally achieving the impossible, and Doncic had performed with pure excellence throughout. Unfortunately, the Clippers regrouped and won the final two games, taking the series and eliminating Dallas for the second straight season. It was heartbreak, but nothing to hang your head on. Luka performed valiantly. No choking was done around here, no. Doncic put up an astonishing 46 points, 14 assists, and 7 rebounds. It was the most you could ask for from your star. Luka finished the year with averages of 28 a night, 8 assists, and 8 rebounds per game. This netted him on the first team All-NBA list for the second straight year and gave him another All-Star appearance to his name. That brings us to present day, where there are many questions not surrounding Luka, but his team in general. Rumors are swirling around Kristaps Porzingis, Kristaps reportedly frustrated because he wants the ball more. The Mavs roster isn't the best in the world. Trading Seth Curry for Josh Richardson proved to be a bad decision. Rick Carlisle has stepped down as head coach due to possible turmoil with Luka. Jason Kidd filled his spot. The pressure to build a championship contender will continue to grow as the seasons go on. And Luka, eventually, will be criticized if he doesn't make it past the first round. With all of that being said, it seems like people are starting to become numb to his greatness. Prodigies like this don't come often. Watching Luka's career grow and evolve will be awesome. Through the eventual ups and downs that will take place in the future, through the soon-to-be iconic moments and game winners that will take place, you the viewer now know his story of how he became a star, and he's only just getting started. Like and subscribe for more basketball content.